Hey coach, so excited that you found our YouTube channel and found everything that we have to offer on teachhoops.com. Um, if you have any questions, go click down below. Um, we're here to help, we're here to serve. So go over and check it out up above. So how's the weather today? Sorry, I... I, I... Are you breaking up? I can't hear you right now. You can or can't? Now I can. Now you can. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can. I'm good Great. now. Is everything coming Great. through good now? Okay. The, the Hawaii to Wisconsin connection works. <laughs> yes. What, what is it? Like five, six hours you said difference? We're five behind you. Okay. All right. So it's afternoon. It's dreary and like 43 degrees in Wisconsin today. <laughs> oh, man. I'm serious. The sun's not out. I'm like in my office right now and the sun's not out. So I was going to walk the dogs and it's like, well, I don't think I'm going to do that today. <laughs> oh boy. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. In January and February and when the winter never ends. I yeah, know it's it's the, the only part I like, like I told my wife when we were tired, I said, the, it, I love Wisconsin, you know, spring and fall is great. Once it starts getting nice. Um, it's just the winters are brutal. It's just like January and February. I mean, we had, um, I think we had five cold days this year, but it's too cold for the kids to go outside. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like I threw boiling water outside and it froze before it hit the ground. That's how cold <laughs> it is. So for the people in Hawaii that are listening, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's really cold. That's really cold. That's like minus 50 degrees. <laughs> wow. Um, all right, so you had some questions on like box and one stuff and what? Yeah, I think like a three two or box and one. I get a feeling like we'll see a little bit more of that next year. Okay, um, and is it because the box and one is because you have one really good score? Um, last year we saw a three two. Um, this coming year, you know, we got two perimeter guys that that are really good for our league. Okay. And you know, I could see guys trying to take that away. Um, is the, and is it a three-two matchup, or is it a two, is it a true three-two? Like a, a, I'm sorry, not a three-two. I'm sorry, a triangle and two. A triangle and two. Okay, okay, okay. I thought you meant a three-two, like a matchup zone. Okay. So, what is your thoughts? I've got a bunch of thoughts on how to tackle this that we've had to do in the past, but. Um. Well. Well. Last year we ended up running our basic man continuity against it. Okay. And what's um, that? It's kind of like a, a ball screen, kind of like the uh, show alter pass, cut through ball yep. screen from the yep. high post. Um, and then, <laughs> and then there's a there, there's one set play that another team did against us in, in man that that kind of seems like it could work out pretty well with a with the one of the players that are being matched up with setting a screen across screen across the lane for maybe a big coming to the ball yep. and with the ball being kind of short wing where he's drawing out the low guy. So maybe to throw into the post off of a cross screen. Okay. Yep. So they are different triangle and two and, and box and one are definitely different on how you want to tackle it. Sure. Um, so do you ha do those two have to score for you to win? Are the other people capable of scoring within close to the basket or hitting an open jumper? Or is it is it that you're gonna, is it that you're going to have to get those two shots? You know, I th I think we'll need a little bit of both. Like okay. we got we got a post guy that that's going to be pretty good for okay. our league. Um, so he can he can do some damage for us. Okay. But you know, we'd like to kind of keep those guys involved. We wouldn't yep. want to just send them yep. in the corner. So, so a lot – so, first of all, if it's a box and one, um, I like overloading a side with the guys that are not in the – in not the guy being chased. Okay. Um, and put him on the weak side. So, I kind of run like a box set. Like, I call it chair. But you put basically a low block, high block, baseline, corner, and wing. So, you put okay. those four guys. They're going to have to match up with them at some point. Okay. Um I don't know if they'll sag and just let those guys take shots, but um, so I would do something like that where you can maybe isolate the guy that they're wanting and work some motion on that side. So that's something I've done. That's been pretty successful. So um, on the bottom one, the, the guy being matched up with is on, on the 
weak side and everything is all overloaded. Opposite. Yeah, that's why if you think about it here, I'm going to, I'm going to, you're not going to be able to see this because you're not on a computer, but I'm going to. I, I actually am on a, a Mac here. Can you see, can you see me? I can see you. Yeah. You can. Okay. So hold on. Let me, um, let me see if I can do this because this is now if, I'm going to, I'm going to ask if you can see, I'm going to, I'm going to share. Just going to go to the whiteboard. Can you see that whiteboard? Yeah, I can. Okay. And can you see on top that I have tab issues that I have like 35 tabs open? I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> I, I have, oh, you just got an email in from I have, yes, I have tab issues up above. So it's issue. All right. So if we look at it in terms of, um, I don't like red. I'm going to use black. Um, so if you think about it in terms of this, um, so let's do, you, you're saying it's going to be a box in one, not a trying, not a diamond in one. Is that what you'd probably see? Uh, don't I don't know yet. Okay. So, so we'll just, we'll, we'll say it's a box in one. So, okay. okay. So these three guys, these four guys are in their box and the off the offensive guy that they're chasing is over on this side. So what I like to do, and you can run it as a continuity too, is I like overloading a side. Because mm -hmm. even if they're in a diamond, they're going to have to decide what they want to do with these guys. Yep. Most of the time, these guys will come out, and then you'll have kind of a high-low isolation here between, we'll call this X4 and this X2. So okay. if this guy comes out and defends here, he's going to have to slide over. He's going to have to slide over. He's going to have to come. And then all of a sudden, you can get some an isolation where they can set a ball screen or wherever the ball is. Um, then what I like to do, I call this my chair set. So then what I do is I set, I have these guys set up, this, this guy sets a screen and we run a dribble attack here. And okay. then you can, you can either kick or keep going. And then you basically, he'll become part, this guy that's being chased will become part of the chair. Um, so then he, he would follow his dribble penetration. He did a kick or go until he gets stopped. Then he yeah. goes through this guy would come through and then these two would X X. This one would become high post. This one would become low post. Okay. okay. So it's a chair set. So I'll, I'll send you, I'll send you this cause I got this drawn up. It's called chair. Um, oh, great. And it's a good, it's a good isolation. Now what I have found, depending on how athletic this guy that's getting chased is, I like setting screens on the baseline for this guy just running. And, you know, he, he can go all the way through. We'll maybe set – this one would come in and maybe we'd set a double screen. This one would maybe over here. So we basically kind of run like a, uh, you know, a two or one, one, three kind of set where we put a couple guys in the bottom to just set screens on him. Because okay. what happens is they're going to be chasing and then the rollbacks are really what's there. This guy just kind of rolling back is really open. Um, so if you run, if you're running kind of a motion, I think that's a really good look. Um, okay. So this, a box in one or a diamond in one is much easier um, in the sense that you probably have another shooter out here. You're, you're going to be able to get some high lows or some isolations. I think yeah. the bigger issue is when you start talking about, um, and I run, I've, I've run all these because I don't think high school kids adjust real well. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so I've run both, you know, uh, I haven't run a box in one in a while. I usually run a, a triangle because usually there's two guys in our league that can shoot. Um, but so what I'll do is let me get, I think this will be, no, nope, that's not what I want. I want this one. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to show you. So you can run a, you can run a, a, a triangle in two two different ways. Most people run it the standard way way where they'll put um, they'll put a guy down here, they'll put a guy on each little block, and then they'll put a guy up top. I do it the other way if I've got a big. So I'll show you this if you ever want to run this. So I'll put a guy I'll put a guy down here. And his slipping. rule, yeah, it it freaks people out. What it does is it helps take away three point shooting. Oops. Um, it helps take away three point shooting. So I'll put a guy down here, especially if I got an aircraft carrier and his job mm -hmm. is no layups. <laughs> he doesn't leave the paint area. Like he's got this area from like right in here and he doesn't okay. leave the paint ever. He's just basically, if I got a big kid and he can protect the rim. And then I put these two guys up here at the elbow, which especially with the way the kids are shooting threes now, 
So yeah. I'll put two of them. I'll put one up here and then I'll put one over here. And well, then we'll have the two chasers. So we'll have one chase in here. We'll have one chase in here. And then these two are kind of, so it's a one man zone, a two man zone. So these two work together. So if the ball goes to the corner, he goes all the way down, he comes over and because they know he's not leaving. And then yep. these two are just full denial. I like that if you play a team that's only got two guys that can score effectively. And all of a sudden, this third scorer starts thinking about it a little bit. <laughs> um, but that's a good – I call that my inverted triangle, too. So you probably won't see that because not a lot of people run it. Yeah. But it's a good thing to throw at people for, you know, a couple minutes. Yeah, that looks um, like fun to throw at somebody. Yeah, it's really good. It's, and if you, you said you had a big – man, you, you, he can just protect the paint and you won't give up any layups. You know, if they're shooting mid-range jumpers, if your fourth best score on the court is shooting mid-range jumpers, you're going to win a lot of games, especially because you're going to get the rebound down here with this guy. Yeah. Um, so the triangle of two is a little different. Um, so we'll go – we'll talk about the one that they basically – that they're talking about um, that most people run. <laughs> I, like, um, I like both of these guys opposite each other because it leaves a lot of space in here. Okay. Um, so if they're in full denial, which is, you know, ballsy if they're in full denial all the way out here. But um, what I try to do then is I try to get one of the guys, one of the other three guys working with the other two. Okay. So let's say, and I always put one in the low post and one in the high post and basically say, you're working together. And then this guy is going, you're going to come set back screens for the other guy. We want movement from the other, from the other three. Um, so maybe these guys even come and set a screen. You know, they'll come down and set a screen for this kid and then roll. So he's going to have to decide, am I leaving? Am I helping on that? Is he going to – because what happens is when he turns the corner, people always want to pass and hold against zones. And even against these kind of zones, they'll just hold it. Dribble penetration will be there against these zones. People don't dribble penetrate, in my opinion, enough against zones. Um, and especially against a zone like this, that there's a lot of space. Mm -hmm. right there's a lot of space in here that you can attack um okay. that i think are really effective um i'm not a big one on quick hitters i'm a big one on okay um let's set some ball screens let's set you know maybe these two maybe these maybe you have a call where the low guy and the top guy will just come all of a sudden and just set a back screen for the score you can have quick hitters like that like we we still want to get these guys involved Mm -hmm. You know, oh, or we're going to get them, we're going to get the ball here and we're just going to isolate him one on one and we're going to put everyone else on the other side of the court. Things like that, I think, are really good as far as, um, as giving different looks because you want these guys involved. You don't want them just standing. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, I would come up with some specific rules you want for, you know, this guy's always going to back screen or roll to the basket. You know, the elbow guy is going to, you know, screen one of the two guys that are up top. Um, but that's, I and mean, that's the way I've always tackled it. I mean, I just don't think you want quick hitters. I think you want space and movement, a lot of movement. Okay. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And then to get the, the guys who are being matched up with involved, the best way to do that you think is to, to ball screen for them? I do. I think the ball screen for them, I think also to just set an, a, a screen, like, Tell your bigs that they got to come up and they got to screen one of those two guys. Because mm -hmm. you want the guys that are chasing to have to worry about getting screened too. Yeah. B because it's several things, unless your guys are different than mine. They don't love talking, so I'm always harping on them on talking. And yeah. it, it's making them make decisions. Because they're probably not spending time right now working on their triangle and, and two. Just, right. I mean, this is like, they're probably, were, if they're playing, they're probably playing man or they're working on their pack line or they're working on deny. So this is something coaches put in in two days. They're not going to be great at it, is my opinion. I've run very few teams that their triangle and two is their defense. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's one of those things that's in your back pocket and now all of a sudden we're playing a team and we got to use it. So we're going to mm -hmm. spend two days practicing it and that's it. So that's yeah. why you want a lot of different movements, I think. Um, just to make them do different things. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So, so ball yeah, screens, sure. um, flashes to the basket, you know, find an open space, you know, and those two guys should always be moving. Um, 
So, you know, you, you should be screening for each other. You should be screening for one of them. You should be, you know, always, always have them doing something because it's going to open stuff up, especially inside for your big, um, mm -hmm. if you get enough movement. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that okay. does. That's okay. great. Thanks. It's much easier to show it than it is to try to talk about it via. Um, uh, yeah, I'll send you chair. I'll write myself a note too. I'll send you chair. Um, that's a good one just for an isolation. Um, I don't know if I'd run that consistently, especially if you're a motion team. I think, I, you know, I think I would do. Um, I would do something like rules rule based, kind of like our, you know, the read and react or something like that. I would I would try to stay with that. I think. Okay. Okay. I heard, and I heard one of your podcasts recently, I'm not sure if it's recently, but you're kind of talking about like three guys chasing and then you had two guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm always like, playing oh, with new stuff. So, so, yep. So then I, I work it the same way in the sense that I leave the bottom guy bot. So I have three guys chasing, they have no help responsibility. So then I got my aircraft carrier on the basket, protecting the, protecting the um, basket. And then I got the top guy basically, He's, he is guarding the next best shooter, yeah. he's basically in one man zone. So if the, if the fourth best scorer on the court gets, gets it in the corner and looks like he's going to shoot, then the top guy's got to go get him. Okay. But again, it's the fourth best shooter on the court. Yeah. If he's wide open, it's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> it's <laughs> a bad thing because it's like, oh, crud. Now, we've all seen those teams that it's like, you can't leave anybody open and you're probably not running it. But you're not yeah. going to give up layups, and the the other three shouldn't score, because yeah. the guy at the L, the guy at the I call it like I call it stack or I call it I or something like that because you basically are making an I. Those three guys are chasing. Guy in the bottom is protecting the rim, no layups, any post ups he's got, and then the top guy is, you know, okay. he's so, helping. So, there's, so when a guy's matched up off of, off of those three guys and they drive it. The five guy is always there. He's the main guy to be helping there. He's always there to help. And if it's up high, if it's up high or they're setting ball screens or something like that, the guy at the elbow can help with that because okay, he yeah. can recover to that fourth guy. Yeah. Um, you know, and then if their fifth guy is going to shoot a three and there's nobody in the paint, I don't know. I haven't seen that many high school teams that are that good at consistently hitting it. Yeah, um, so if the aircraft carrier is kind of helping, it's the four's response, the, the other guy's responsibility to guard two. On yes. the other side, probably. Yes. That's yes. How you think it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If they're doing that, like, then yeah. Go ahead. Good stories around that where like the four guy or the fifth best player is taking a, a few shots and misses them, and it's like their well, team. Well, no, here's what here's out. what here's, and I'm a stats teacher, but here I'm going to tell you what I've seen observationally is those top three start yelling at the fourth one, <laughs> like no, I'm dead. I mean, I've I've seen it. It's like the fourth. Why are you shooting so much? Why are you shooting so much? And he yells back, well, I'm open. My argument would be you're open because I want you to be open. But, they, you know, they're, they, you know, and that, that's even if no one's in foul trouble. All of a sudden, maybe one of their top three scorers is in foul trouble. And now you're chasing three. That's the fourth best score then. And then number five is shooting those. Yeah. It works. It, it does. But, again, it's, it's – and you've probably listened to some of my podcasts. I believe just little quick changes can change – you know, it's a feel thing when you've coached long enough. But it's like my my theory is if they've scored two or three times in a row on us, I'm changing. Okay. I'm, I'm changing because I want them to have to adjust. This ain't working. You know, yeah. if you've come down and scored two or three times on us, now I've adjusted that, you know, if they things happen and they won banks, whatever, things happen. But you mm -hmm. can kind of sense that as a coach that, ooh, this yeah. is not going. I just want to change the rhythm of the game a little bit. That's all I'm trying to do is just change the rhythm. Um, okay. And this will definitely change the rhythm. You have yeah. a shot. You don't have a shot clock, do you? No, we don't. Okay. Okay. So if that four guy makes like a couple of shots, I'd get out of it, do something else, or I chase it, or I chase him or yeah. Or we, we've run four before too, where we chase four guys and then one guy stays, then, then the, then the fifth guy, we, we, we leave the guy, other guy in the, we say go ahead and shoot it <laughs> um so we'll chase four and we'll leave the aircraft carrier in home to protect against any dribble drives or any like slips he's there just to protect the rim and mm -hmm. then we'll you, that fifth guy gets the ball go ahead we're not leaving the paint go ahead yeah yeah, yeah. oh so man that's gonna be a nightmare getting ready to play you guys in that way <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Let's see, we got to get ready for this and this and this and this. Right. And then all of a sudden, so maybe we run that for two possessions, and now I'm going to throw a 1-3-1 one, one at you for four possessions. And then, wait, no, now we're going to go to our matchup, so you're not really sure if we're in man or we're in zone. It's just really quick, ding, 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 ding. And then if things – if don't get me wrong, if something's working, I'm riding it. Like, yeah. okay, we're playing – I mean, I'd want to play 70 80% man if I can. And if it's working – you know, if you watch the, you know, Virginia Tech, you ain't changing. <laughs> you know, Texas Tech, you, you're doing that. You're riding that horse. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I just, you know, I don't have enough time with them. You know, we, from November to March, it's like, I just don't have enough. So I got to figure ways to kind of change momentum is what yeah. I'm looking for. Yeah, your opponents facing you probably just get confused or just right. get out of they got in the, So they played on Tuesday, they got to play us on Friday. They only got two days to get ready for us. Mm -hmm. Are they going to get, are they going to get better at their stuff or are they going to spend it preparing for us? So yeah. I think it's the question coaches always have to ask themselves. It's like, um, you know, and I, and I'll tell you right now, we're not like, and this has been a theory of mine for like 15 years. It's like, I would love to play man to man. I would love to do what Tony does. I would love to do that all the time. Every possession, bing, bing, bing. If I had them all year, I could do it. But I, you know, I, I have 10, you know, seven practices. And I got to play a game. You know, I don't have time. So I'm, we're almost like average at a lot of things rather than exceptional at one. Um, you know, and there's some we obviously we track and we get better at as the season goes on. But how big is the high school you're at? Uh, we're about 1,000 kids. Oh, that's pretty big. We're okay sized. Um, maybe five, six other schools about the same size on our island. On the island. And then do you only play on your island? Uh, yes. And then a state tournament is on Oahu. Okay. And, and you play – and how do they break up divisions in, in Hawaii? We got two divisions. Okay. And what's the cutoff? That is a great question because they don't they, – teams can go up and down based on, I think, what their AD decides. Oh, really? So got, got small schools that has a, have a good program, and then they'll go up. Okay. And then, you know, if a big school's having a down year, they want to go down. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's not enrollment-based. Okay. So, there's no surprises on the island? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know who you're playing. We see them in summer league. We see them, you know, spring league, fall league. Yeah, we just see these guys playing all the time. Shouldn't be any surprises. So, the, so okay, so this is me thinking outside the box then. So, you – so there's going to be no surprises. These are, the, I mean, basically you got to beat those six teams to go to the state tournament. Yeah. Okay. So that's where you, I think you're right. I think you have to think about, okay, how do I beat this team? How do I beat this? I mean, you got to basically start preparing. Yeah. You know who the best of the teams are. Who do I, how do I prepare to beat those teams? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> I love that part. And it seems like you do too. That like, how does a chess match work? Right, because I think it's I I think it's actually more intriguing than like hell, we got ten teams in our conference, and that's just our conference. That's not the whole state. So it's like, and I don't know who I would have to play come tournament. I think that I think that's an awesome chess match. That's a great challenge for you mm -hmm. guys and your kids. It's like, well, and then I would call them on. It's like, well, look at this team. Team X can really shoot. We got to get we got to shoot the ball better, you know, or we better be able to defend more or those kind of things. Do you have a hard time getting them out? Um, they're, they're always doing stuff, but it's hard to get them all together doing right. stuff. Like they're with this club team or that club team. And we don't really get them all together until the fall. Okay. Okay. But we, we, we get a handful here and a handful there. Okay. So then I'd, I'd say skill work would be where you'd want to tackle shots, yeah. make them shooters. Um, cause that's, that's the one area I've, I've been doing some reading. That's the one area the kids have gotten actually progressively worse at, even though, you know, the three point thing is they're just not spending the time just working on that craft, their shooting craft. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a place that people can exploit, you mm -hmm. know, but that's a matter of, you got to get them in the gym. You got to get shots up. Yeah. You know, shoot. That's, that's one other question that I kind of had on the side was what, what are the, some of the things are there, are there fun drills or fun things that you get to kind of, include in the workouts to to make it easier for them to get in the gym 
Okay, so how does it work? Do you do it before school? Do you do it after school? Do you do it at night? We got some time right after school, a couple of days a week. A couple of days a week. Okay. Um, and uh, and you're dealing with boys, right? It's boys, right? Yeah. Okay. So I think you got to make it competitive. The only way that they're going to do it is you got to make it competitive. And there should be something at, you know, I don't know what it is, but, and, you know. Um, but something where like they want to compete against each other. You almost like it's almost and what I've done, you know, it's almost like got to be and we've done this in the summer when we can have contact with them. But it's almost like a tournament like, all right, A goes versus B, B goes versus C. And then, you know, you do this whole kind of, you know, belt thing. You kind of want to win. I mean, I'm dead like WWE kind of thing. It's seriously yeah. because they're teenage boys. They're egocentric. But when they go against their friends, then they don't want to be embarrassed and they want to beat them. Um, yeah. So you got to kind of make it like, okay, we're going to come in for two weeks and we're going to get a base and we're, we're going to track how many shots you make. And we're, you do these shots and this is what I've done. You do these shots, blah, 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 blah. So then you track it. It's a pain in the butt, um, but you track it. And then after that, we're going to um, have a tournament. And then the seed is by how you do the first two weeks. So you get them focused on the first two weeks. That's the hardest part. You keep reminding them that this is for their seed. And then after that, you go boom, 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 boom. If, even if you got six kids, it doesn't matter, or four kids, because they yeah. can compete against each other, and then you can cross it. And then you say, whoever wins, um, I'll take out for wings or something or, you know, whatever. You yeah. know? Um, and then, you know, and then I go on Amazon, you get one of those big WEE fake belts. And it's like, <laughs> you have the belt for the next, you know, month until we do it again. And that, that, that's that. fantastic. Um, so that kind of stuff, I'm just telling you, teenage boys are a, like, there should be an, I well, there is an island and they live on it, but there should be literally a, their own island where they, where teenage boys live. Because that's just how they think, you know, they want to be competitive. They don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to be up by their friends but they want it to be fun. You're right. And it's got to be something like that. And then if you do that, they'll get so many shots up. And then that the, the key is, in my opinion, is then once they're done, even the kid that got seventh place or whatever, you say, yeah. Hey, look, you took all these shots and you yeah. made all these, and this is where you're really good. And then they go, Oh, I did, you know, cause they're not even thinking about that. They're thinking about trying to beat their friends. Trying to move up the ladder. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Trying and I, trying yeah. To get closer to that belt. What? Trying to get closer to that belt. Yeah, you want the belt or you want whatever. You can talk to your captains or whatever you want it to do, whatever's silly, but you know, yeah. And then they can keep it in the locker room during the year. And then you can do maybe free throw ladders or something like that during the year to see who gets the next belt or whatever it is. It, it, you can buy cheap ones like that. It's not that big a deal, but um, to make it fun like that is key. You, you, okay. You're right. Um, and then there's got to be something at the end that they want. Maybe you get, maybe, and what <laughs> I've done this too. And it's like, all right, you get out of um, ladders for two weeks once the season starts, or you and a friend get out of ladders. Those kind of things where they mm -hmm. have some power that I don't really care. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. You don't have to run ladders this week, or you don't have to, you know, do the early morning lifting for a week, or you can be creative, whatever it is. Um, it works. Trust me. It does. Okay. It definitely works. Great. Great. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot. This is yeah, fantastic. no problem. You let me know if you have any other questions. Okay. Um, Thanks. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Coach. So glad you enjoyed the video. Let me know how we can help. Join ttroops.com up above. Um, I've been through it all. I've won championships, won a bunch of rings. Let me know how I can help you become a better basketball coach. Click ttroops.com and check it out.